Guys. Yeah. All right. Mujiyaski. Yejaska Sajafachki dos. Yejayat Sajafachki. I'm glad to see everyone again. Thank you for joining us. Uh, today we'll be going over sentence structure. I think it was Aaron last week that mentioned she wanted to do, go over sentence structure. And if you're not careful, sentence structure will make you want to run into a wall. So if we need to, if you don't understand everything fully tonight, you're not alone because I know Jay and myself, we don't understand it fully either. So we're going to try our best to I, last week, I was, last Friday, I was talking to Rosemary. Jay mentioned her last week. She's a fluent speaker, but I was asking her about this book, Beginning Creek book, and it turns out there's typos. There's typos in there, and it's very frustrating because they have one thing spelled this way, another thing spelled that way, and then I ask her, and then she gets, um, you know, it's easier for her just to talk than to tell you about how to write it. And then so she gets confused. She confuses herself. And so it's very, you can get mad pretty quick. And so, but the uh, basic, basically what we're going to go over today is just the uh, basic construction of a sentence in Creek and which is just the subject object verb. And I have a document. I'll share that. Yeah. Hey, Jessica, everyone. Does everyone see that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so if you see some of these words and you're like me when you first see it, they're very, you don't know what they are. So just to dive right into it. And at the end, if you feel like you didn't learn anything and you're just confused, Again, that's okay because it's going to take time. You're not going to just learn this in one day. And this is just as basic as you can get. And even if you do learn this, when you uh, when you're someone is speaking to you in Creek, uh, that makes that frustrates you too because you think you've learned something and you have, but I mean, you know, not everyone. You know, the man is lying down is not going to come up in a sentence when you're talking to someone, or the baby is sleeping. So it's, you can get frustrated, and, but what I, what I would like everyone to know today is just the basic construction of it, which is subject, object, verb, and that uh, the significance of these uh, T's and N's. And uh, this first page, I just learned this last week. I had no idea that this was, uh, fact, but I just, I was reading in the book last week and I asked Rosemary about it and she confirmed that uh, for definite nouns, you don't need T's and N's. So, uh, but first uh, we need to define what a definite noun is. And I have, uh, in that beginning Creek book, it says a noun is definite when the article the is used to introduce it. So an example of this in English is the dog is chasing the cat. And this is more uh, specific, you know, maybe if you're talking about someone, you know, specifically, you're going to say the, you're going to use that to describe the noun, uh, the subject or the object. And so a noun is definite when the article the is used to introduce it, just like the dog is chasing the cat. And I've, people have attempted to teach me this several times in the past, and I always get frustrated because, like I said, it's just so confusing. But, and when you're, I mean, when you're speaking Creek, you know, you're not going to insulate in your head as, you know, the or a, you know, you're just going to, you know, by the time you figure that out, you know, they're already on five sentences ahead of, five sentences ahead of you. So, again, we just need to dive into this. It's scary, but we're going to try it. And for these definite nouns, so if you're just going to say the man, you do not need a T or an N on definite nouns. You don't need one at all. And Jay, I don't know if you knew that or not, but like I said, that's news to me. I didn't realize that. And 
we're going to have uh, three examples. And the first two examples, um, we just have a subject and a verb. But in the third example, we have the subject, object, and the verb. And so, and on the next page, I use all this, the same three sentences just to minimize any confusion, confusion that we have there. So for number one, Hunanwa wakis. Hunanwa wakis. That means the man is lying down. And again, if you notice, there is no T on the uh, subject. The subject is the man, and there's no T. This is for definite nouns. And so I'm saying the man, so there is no T and no, uh, there's not an object, so obviously there's no N. And uh, the infinite, uh, fin infinitive of wakis is wakida, which means uh, lying down, and I'll uh, type that out. And the good thing about this is that I know we'll never, we may not ever use these uh, sentences too often in, when you're speaking to someone in Creek, but you know, that helps you learn more words because you may not use those sentences, but you'll use those words in different instances. So it's good to and just get more familiar with verbs. And there are so many verbs. You look in the dictionary, it's so many to do this, to do that. And, you know, there's so many that I don't know. I wish I did, I'm working on it. But uh, like Jay said before, we're, we're not experts in this. We're just trying to share with what we've learned. But this is a very simple sentence. And the, uh, the subject goes first. The subject is honanwa, and then the verb wak is. And if you remember last week, I think it was uh, the singular uh, third person, he, she, or it, and you have that is sound right here. Uh, on wakida, that was the infinitive, so we dropped these last three letters here, this e, e, t, b, and we added is. And that way we can make a sentence and you're saying he, she, or it is lying down. So, and you have honanwa first. That's again, that's the subject. And then wak is the man is lying down. And can't, just to stress it again, there is no T because we're saying the man. And that's what a definite noun is. And I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm explaining that very well, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and ask, does anyone have any questions so far? If you do, go ahead and let me know. If not, we're going to keep going on. Um, like I said, we just have to keep doing more examples and I feel like the way I've explained it, it can be very confusing. So I'm just going to keep going on. And hopefully this won't be the only class that we talk about this because it's very vital to uh, know these things. And so hopefully in the next classes, we'll be going over it, reviewing it. But the, uh, the second example uh, is the baby is sleeping. Beboji, uh, that's uh, one word that uh, I've uh, my family uses and I know there's different names for Beboji. Some people just say Bebi or Hogozi and there might be even, or Hogwewa, but Hello. So kind of these, these sentences are easier to use uh, if you're just saying uh, using the definite nouns, but as we'll see on the next page, when you uh, when it's indefinite nouns, that's when you start needing those those in marks. So, beboji uh, no, just the baby is sleeping, and beboji is uh, the subject, and then it goes subject verb, and the verb is. Uh, the infinitive is nojida, which means to sleep, nojida. And again, we drop that ETV off the verb and add the is, the ES at the end. 
And then you're able to say he, she, it is sleeping. But with this uh, subject, now you can say who or who is sleeping. Beboji, beboji nojis. The baby is sleeping. It's a definite noun, no need for a T. Uh, Hadam, any questions? Aboga <coughs> oje. Yeah. Um, when you talk to people, do a lot of people use the, uh, like what you're saying, you know what I mean? Like, do most people, Bonayogi Mahokin, do they, they won't use the T or the N, is what you're saying? Marungo? Um, I've never heard that, <laughs> but then I'm just, uh, you know, when they mentioned sentence structure, mm -hmm. and, uh, when I was talking to Rosemary and I got, I got the basic, um, lecture. Uh, yeah. Basic lecture, basic rules, of what you're supposed to use, of course. Um, and it says that in the book, in that book too, it says that they, um, a speaker won't always abide by those rules, you know, they'll, use, yeah, yeah. Dias. They'll use, they won't always use those same rules and they'll stray away from it. But I mean, this is kind of, I guess just for the sake of where we're at, you know, beginning, uh, it, this is the way it is. And of course, I know when me, uh, you and me are talking, we, we don't ever <laughs> use that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but this is just basically what the, uh, the book has said and what Rosemary has said. And that's, this is if you want to get technical and, you know, I, I think we ought to stay uh, consistent in what we what we're on the same page, I guess, you know. So that's um, basically, like I said, I just learned this last week. I had no idea they would ever not use a T or N for on the subjects or the objects. Jinda. How about mothers? Anything else? Okay, on um, this last example, uh, now we have an object. And this is the uh, example I use at the, uh, the top of this page. The dog is chasing the cat. The college uses this um, example in every, seems like in every one of their, uh, when they're talking about T's and N's and these N marks. So, if a bozi asijas. If a bozi asijas. The dog is chasing the cat. So this is, has two definite nouns here. Uh, the two nouns being the dog and the cat. So of course there would be no T and no N marks. And uh, the if a is the subject of this sentence. The uh, bozi is the object. And the verb is asijus. Asijus means to chase, and the infinitive of that is asijida. And just like we've done in the past examples, you drop that ETV at the end of asijida, and you add ES, which makes a hiss sound. That's the singular third person. Uh, he, she, it is chasing. So now we have two nouns. And even this whole idea of subject, object, verb, I didn't learn that until recently either. Because, like I said, when you're talking to someone, you know, you just, I don't think like that. And to be honest, I didn't really know this in English either. So, <laughs> so if a bozi asijas, you have your, your subject goes first. And this is different from uh, English. So in English, uh, the, the dog is our subject, and here's the verb, chasing, which is in the middle of the sentence, and the cat is the object. So the, uh, the verb just shows what the subject's doing to the object. And so in this sentence, if a bozi asijas, if a, the subject is chasing asijas, the cat, bozi. If a bozi asijas. So whether or not today, uh, at the end of the day, if you think, man, I didn't understand a word he said, I didn't know the rules, 
I didn't learn anything. Just know that it's backwards and that um, for these basic sentences, I do know that it, it goes the subject, the object, and then the verb. And like I said, I'm even, this is not something that I'm comfortable with. You know, I'm not po uh, positive like on the past things we've taught. Um, this has been, um, I've learned a lot the past week too, just like I'm sure many of you are, have been. So uh, this, that was just a very simple, I mean, really as simple as I can explain it. And uh, Jay, he, he might have some more explanations on maybe what he's encountered and heard people say, but these are just your fundamental rules of definite nouns. There's also indefinite nouns, which is on the second page, but I'm gonna stop right now, uh, just for a second. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Maybe you learned something different. I know some of you have taken classes at the college, and if you do, that's fine. Like Jay said, we all learn different, <clears throat> different things. We all come from different areas. So does anyone have anything to add at this time? Mungo? Jay? Magara Giaja? No? Okay, well, we're gonna keep, keep on rolling <laughs> because like I said, that's, I can remember six, seven years ago, uh, Rosemary trying to teach me this, and I lost, I lost interest because I thought that's too hard, you know, you, you know, we don't want to, something gets too hard, we just kind of want to, it's, it's tempting to just give up and say, well, I'll learn something else, and that's kind of what I did. And instead of actually learning on paper how to speak, I just kind of exposed myself to actual speakers, you know, around that time, or, well, what, seven years ago, but and then later on I met Jay, and so then I, I just did more learning by speaking. And one thing I've learned in the past years is just that when it all comes down to it, if you don't have someone to talk to, you know, none of this, will, you, you won't retain it. You know, you have to have someone to talk to, which is why I'm glad as a youth council, you know, youth services, we're doing this because, you know, I want to be able to talk to all of you. You know, we can have, um, hold our meetings in Creek, you know, be able to talk to one another. We won't have to speak English. That's something that Jay and I have been wanting to do for a while. And so, but we have to start somewhere. And even though this may seem difficult, it's got to be done. And it's the best resources that we have. So with that being said, we're going to go on to the second page, indefinite nouns. So uh, just like we talked about first, definite nouns are nouns that have used the word of, or I mean of, hey, la, the. A noun is indefinite when it is preceded by the article a. So an example is a dog is chasing a cat. This could be any dog. That could be Gary Mitchell's dog. It could be any cat. It could be Jay's cat, whatever. It doesn't matter. You're just talking about, it's really a general statement. And I don't want to be wrong on this, but in that book I read that it could be talking about multiple, you know, that could be dogs are chasing cats. And when you start getting like that, and it's just, makes you, like I said, makes you want to just pull your hair out, you know, because it's frustrating and it's not as simple as we would like it. But again, this is what we're, this is just basic sentence structure. And uh, so indefinite nouns, a noun is indefinite when it is preceded by the article a, such as a dog is chasing a cat. So when you're using indefinite nouns, you do use the T and N markers, and they appear at the end of the nouns, and the nouns are the subjects and the objects. I'll go ahead and say that uh, you use the T's on the subjects and use the N's, the letter N, for the objects. And these, uh, these sentences are the same ones I used at the, on the first page because I don't want to do cause any more confusion than I already have. So uh, we'll just use that. So on the first page, if you remember, I had the man 
is lying down, but now I have a man. This could be any man. We don't know who it is. We're just saying he's lying down. And so if you'll notice, we have, I have the, those, these end marks in bold. The T's will appear at the end of a subject. So, so the subject is the man, Honanwa. Now the word for man is Honanwa. And the way you would say that is Honanwat Wakis. Honanwat Wakis. And even, you know, when someone's talking to you, and they're talking so fast, you don't even hear T's and N's at the, at the end of their um, subjects and objects. So I've asked myself too, like, okay, so what's the point of using these ends if you can't even hear? And uh, Rosemary gave me an explanation that you use the T's and the ends, those are just to, uh, they're, they're really helpful when it comes to identifying uh, what you're talking about. So, um, you know, if there was an end here, you know, it could be saying something sitting or lying down on a man. So you need that T there to say that the man or a man, see, I'm even getting confused. A man is lying down. Onanwat. Onanwat is the subject. And you know that because there's a T there. And in the future, when we start putting adjectives in there, that T will always uh, signify what that subject, um, the subject is, except it doesn't go on the subject, it goes on the adjective. And so those end markers just go all over the place and it just makes you want to cry, but we can't. So it's very frustrating. I can't say that enough. Honan what walk is. And just to, I know I already said it and you might be tired of me saying it, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. Just might help someone. And if it does, praise the Lord. But walk is uh, to lie down. ETV, we dropped that ETV, and we had is. So now you're saying he, she, or it is lying down. But now with the subject, we know who's lying down. Well, none what walked is. The man, a man is lying down. And I just uh, have the explanations right here. Again, well, none what is the subject. That's who we're talking about. Well, none what. And uh, walk is, it just shows what he's doing. What's, uh, what's Honanwa doing? Honanwa walk is, he's lying down. And uh, I don't know, I'm just, that's the best I can explain it. Haritse, haritse. Sameta boganoje, man nako jayajangi. Does this change when the verb changes tenses? Mamagi, ayabushka ujicha. Um, when the verb changes to Wait, Samantha, what do you mean does this? What does this change? Are you talking about the the T or? Um, like, yeah, from the T, uh, does that change or does it appear whenever it, like the verb changes, like instead of lying down, he laid down or he's oh, going yeah. down, like that, does it change in that sense or does the verb stay the same? And that T stays the same. It would stay the same. Jay? Uh-huh. So like uh, Samantha was saying, if you're going to say the man um, was lying down or he, he was lying down, wagunks or wakunks. I said, yeah, wakunks. Um, the, uh, the T will stay the same. It, it's not going to change the, uh, the form of the subject and you could use that for any other any other things so you could say walk please the man is going to lie down a man is going to lie down and or then you can even say he just lied down and i'm not too familiar with those i, I know jay is but mm -hmm. from my understanding no the t will it'll stay on the subject and it's not going to change at all uh <clears throat> um let's see uh Samantha going back to your question of does it change but okay I want to throw in something this T like Mahi said sometimes you'll hear it and then sometimes you won't and uh that's uh I mean this is really true because 
you know, you won't always hear this and some people don't use it. I know like me and Mahi, sometimes we use it, sometimes we won't. And it's not, um, again, there's no right or wrong way to do this because we know the structure of these things. But, but like he was saying, it when you add it on there, it helps to learn it because these can be big sentences. But one thing I want to make note of is that those, uh, those verbs, the tenses are in the verbs and they'll never change the... Uh, uh, the nouns or adjectives, and we'll never do that. So what he would have, you know, what he's saying the man's lying down right now, currently. So that T, it could be there and it could not be there. But, and this kind of goes back into another thing that we talk about a lot is context. Typically, you know, if you say to me, now this is just undogur, uh, I'm just talking for myself. Um, if you say honan wat wakis or honan wa wakis and we're having a conversation, I know what you're talking about because we, we're having a conversation. I know the context you're talking about. But now if you was eavesdropping and you heard those, then it's a little bit more important because now you have to talk about, well, is it a man or the man? And I kind of want to go back onto that. We talk about this book, this purple book. Some of you may have it, Beginning Creek. It's thirty dollars or so kind of pricey comes with cds i got some gibi doing <laughs> but i think but i lost both of my cds but anyways it's good good about four three hundred pages worth of information but it's hard to understand but again people that wrote this pamela Ines, linda alexander tilkins they were more seminal speakers so their dialect's different than what ours were and to go off that too is this is very um, linguistics. And if we know anything, <laughs> linguistics wasn't made for Stajati folk, just like all these other academic fields. They weren't made for uh, normal folk to, to understand and comprehend. So when we talk about indefinite and definite, these are white terms imposed upon our language, right? Because again, A and D didn't exist in our language, but we can, go back and look in here and see that T was an article and then some people used it, some people didn't. So that's, so that's why this is a little bit complicated, but it's also, um, I guess what Mahi was saying, he wanted to give up for me. I also wanted to give up, but I, to me, if it didn't make sense, then it, I would come back to it. But in regards to this, you know, you're not going to say, hey, guys, let's have a conversation. And we're only going to use indefinite nouns. You know, well, you don't, Stajati people don't do that, right? And so that's why, again, it's, it's important to know. But as you start um, speaking more and being around Stajati speakers, they really don't use, um, they don't adhere, I guess would be a better phrase, they adhere to these terminologies of indefinite and definite. But... I mean, it's still important to know because a lot of times you have to have that T. I know I, I use the T more than the N and I use the N for other things. But as we go along, we're gonna start incorporating subject phrases and object phrases, which object phrases gets into um, prepositions, adjectives, all those sorts of things. So it is a little bit important. Again, create that foundation and then as we go along, it'll become more important as we get along. Dias. Is there any other questions right now? He goes. Inga. Uh, just to go off what Jay was saying, uh, just a little bit more. Um, I never hear, sometimes I won't hear those T's and N's, like he was saying. And you're talking to someone and even if they are using them they're talking so fast that you don't realize it and you know whenever if someone tells me something i don't think oh did he just say a man or did he say the man you know you're too busy to find out what this man's doing <laughs> so it's just um like he said this is just the foundation of basic basic sentences and even though the t's and the uh the T signifying whether it's A or D, you know, it'll always be the subject 
object and verb of these basic sentences and you'll see you'll see them written differently and just like in that book uh, he's showed everyone you know they have they'll have an example on one page to show uh, what this rule is like what we're talking about today for these definite indefinite nouns but on the next page they'll use they won't adhere to it and rosemary explained to me that that was because like he said those those people um who helped with this book they were fluent in Seminole, but the woman who was writing this was white and so she was just listening for those sounds and sometimes she heard them sometimes she didn't that's why there's examples that they don't match and when i found that out you know it does make you want to throw throw the book down and just and just scream because you know you want to we want to learn this we want to learn the language yet you know there's these these resources that are great at times but when you really want to know an answer they're not always the best uh, tool to use and that's why you know when it comes down to it you just have to speak it you just have to talk to other people you know just like i know jay he does a lot of work with claudia and he talks to her all the time and that's that's what it takes and i've learned a lot from jay just by texting him to talking to him and um like I said, these are just the, the re, you know, whenever they mentioned last week, sentence structure. I mean, this is what I know of sentence structure, but it would be, it would be much easier if we could just talk to each other and then it would just become natural. But of course, we only have an hour, so, you know, we're not going to be able to do that. And so this is just a paper, uh, something that I, I wrote up as simple as I could just to try to help out anyone. And again, it's confusing me. I mean, you hear me slip around my, the A's and B's. And so just, just know that uh, even though this may be confusing, this, is, this has got to be this is the first step if we want to even do any, do any dabbling in uh, sentences. So uh, this is almost done. This is almost, a, I guess we're on the second one. Uh, number two. Bebojit, bebojit nojis. Again, that T just tells you that this is an uh, indefinite noun. So you're saying a baby is sleeping. You don't know who it is. You're just saying a baby is sleeping. And uh, nojis again, uh, that that hasn't changed. You're just saying is sleeping. Bebojit, that T signifies the subject. And if you don't learn anything else today today just know that the t will tell you what the subject is and the n will tell you what the object is now this definite indefinite stuff you know i have had to review it and review it and it's it's confusing so if anything just just know the the t's and the n's and again the infinitive for to sleep is nojida and you take off this ETV uh, to create nojis. Is nojis. You're saying he, she, or it is sleeping. But now we have a subject. So you say bebojit nojis. Bebojit nojis. A baby is sleeping. And then for the last example, uh, this one, just like in the first page, we have uh, <clears throat> the addition of an object. Uh, a dog is chasing a cat. So just some random, you know, you'll see this around Hannah a lot. Just a dog chasing a cat or a dog chasing a person, you know. So the ends will appear at the end of an object. Now, I've, even though they may not always adhere, to, uh, speakers may not always adhere to, um, you know, the definite, indefinite, all that stuff. They will, I mean, when they do use it, they will use the T's and the N's. That's something I've heard pretty regularly. And a lot of times I think they're just talking so fast that I can't hear them. So uh, if it, if it is the, uh, the subject, so you're saying if it a dog, bozen, bozen, uh, a cat, and you're saying what they're doing, osseges. And again, the verb goes at, the end of the sentence. So you have your uh, subject here, if it, your object here, bozen, 
and then the verb asigis and the infinitive of cha uh, to chase is asigida asigida drop the etv add the es asigis now you have um, is chasing he she or it is chasing but but now since we have a subject and an object we can say a dog if it that's why there's the t there a cat bulls in that's why we have the n and osages so we know that if it is chasing osages the cat bulls in a dog is chasing a cat if it bulls in osages if i didn't explain some of this in the best way um, i apologize but oh, someone has a question uh, aaron oh where do you put the markers if there's more than one subject or object uh, i have not gotten that far <laughs> jay I'm, you may have but um this is this is the extent of what i know it's just one subject and one object and obviously when you're uh, you hear speakers you know it's not it's not going to be this simple you know they're going to they're going to use different subjects different objects different tenses and you know he said he said this she said that and by the end you know you're just tired <laughs> jay magda jaja yeah i'll talk a little bit about this one okay so if there's two or more subjects or objects so Daryl and Aaron, okay? Those are two, Daryl and Aaron talk. Okay, there's two subjects, right? There's Daryl and there's Aaron. Well, where does the subject marker go? Or the, yeah, subject marker go? The best way to explain it is that it goes after the last subject. Same thing with the um, uh, objects. But again, this is where it gets a little bit murky because um when when depending on the sentence as well it could be at the first or it could be at the second marker or subject um but again when i mentioned earlier there's subject phrases and object phrases this is where your subjects go so if there's a subject phrase then everything about your subject is in that phrase just like a prepositional phrase in the tree by the house things like that right so the short answer is I guess it depends, but the simple answer to that is that it goes after the second one, okay? And we'll get to that as we go along. Display it, huh? Yeah, if that's all I had written down. And that's, again, I just think I'm confused. I feel like I'm confusing people and well, I'm confusing myself the reason I say that but that's all i had mhm inga ma ukhola lage man uh pula hando es so again this book pamela in a public in innis public enemy number 2 number 1's reserved already so number 2 she's a associate professor of linguistic anthropology at the university of wyoming lermi my este het ke ho she's white let me take up to get to um, a professorship and tenureship, whatever, you have to write a book. So chances are, she was like, this language is endangered. Let me write a book and then I get tenure. And once you get tenure at an institution, you have a job for the rest of your life. Munduezen, kind of going back off Aaron's question, if I say Daryl is sitting, do I say Daryl? Daryl? Leggies? You know what I mean? You wouldn't say Daryl. <laughs> or you you know because that don't that don't sound right Daryl I mean or would you you know that's where it gets into those questions yeah My I've heard Rosemary say that mm-hmm so then it's when she's using sentences mm -hmm. so we'll do that. just using that as examples I don't know <laughs> yeah but even that it's like okay so are you the Daryl or a Daryl right so then it gets even more confusing so my whole gist of this is that 
indefinite and definite are kind of, you know, these formal formalities of the language and we're not formal people in terms of conversational speaking, even in English, right? So Hayoin, we're gonna try to think about that, but we're gonna move on to something else. I'm gonna start sharing my screen. Uh, Hila Nagstorm, share screen. I'm gonna share my screen with y'all. And uh, open, we're uh, gonna do translation activities. We talked a little bit more about doing that. So we're gonna do that at this time. Uh, hold on, how did it say? But uh, are, are there any other questions y'all got? Oh, are there any questions? Okay, I can't share my screen. I updated my computer and it's not letting me. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, what should we call it? Oh, there it goes. Huh. I don't know what I did. Die. Okay. So last Thursday, we talked a little bit about um, activities we could do. And I, uh, I'm going to assign, we have about 15 minutes. So we're going to go through this and um, go through these. And I want everybody to translate a sentence. Um, so we're kind of shifting gears here. But keep in mind, you know, the T and the N, right? Um, for specifically number three or one and two have name subjects and then the rest don't. So I see Teresa is, is the first person on my screen. Ter Teresa, would you be willing to do number one? Translate that for us. Okay. Dias. So we're gonna, let, let, let's go through this. So I see Samantha. Our subject is I, okay, this is English. Subject is I in English. Hijida, or sorry, C is the verb, and Samantha is our object. So we went over, Mahi mentioned at the beginning of our meeting, subject, object, verb, right? So then the question becomes, I is the subject, does I go first in Muskogee? No. The reason why is because your subject is already built into your verb. Therefore, it would be your object first, okay? So, Teresa, um, how would you uh, translate this out? Sorry, Abby's not here. I can't do this. Um, so it'd be Samantha first. Yes. Samantha. Good job, Samantha. And then it would be, um, so would it be still be the Hichita? Since yes. I? Yes. Yep. Okay. Samantha Hichita. So it'd be Hichita, but we take out the ETB. And how do we say the ES? I? The ES? Not the ES. Close though. I S. <laughs> I S. Good. Die, you buddy. <laughs> Good job. So, go ahead, read this for us. Samantha Hejes. Hejes. Good. Samantha Hejes. Good job. So, Samantha Hejes. I see Samantha. Good job. Okay. Now, Samantha. Samantha Hejes. Right. So that's another variation, but. Again, context, we know Samantha, he jazz. We see her, he jazz, as long, your I is your A sound, he jazz, I see Samantha, okay? So good job, Teresa. We're gonna, I see uh, Michaela and Jasmine next, so one of you Hokies wanna say uh, number two, Arlene is learning. Michaela said Jasmine, go ahead, Jasmine. I can't hear you. <laughs> okay. Well, we could talk it out too. Hold on. 
Got it. Okay. Okay. Sorry, we had technical difficulties with our screen too. <laughs> okay. Okay, so is it Arlene mm -hmm. Gislitskis? Not Gislitskis. Or is it is it third person then? Yes. Good okay. Time. Okay, Gislis, 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 yeah, Gislis. Um, Gislis, Gislis, okay. yep, Gislis, good. So I'm glad you mentioned that, third person. So if there's ever a doubt of who is doing the action, replace it with the pronoun, okay? So I see, well, you know I is first person, but Arlene, what is our Arlene? Is she they, them, us, we, she, right? So then that's how you, I, I love your thought process. Third person, yep, Arlene Keithies, Arlene Keithies. So she's learning. So we're just talking about her, Arlene Keithies. Good. Okay, let me see who's next on my screen. Uh, it looks like Sam, can you see the screen? You're my next person on my screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you do number three for us? The little boy is talking. Giovanni. Boy, Bonietes. Oh, uh, to talk down here. Ponaida. We're going to use Ponaida. Onaya? Yes. Chabani or Chabanoji. Chabani slash Chabanoji. Nice. Good. Good. Same thing as uh, the Buckley's example. Third person, little boy. It's a he. So, and we know it's a one person. So, nice. Good. Um, good job. Going down to number four. We are learning Muskogee. Okay, Mahaya is on my screen. Mahaya, can you see the screen? Uh oh. Okay. Mm. Okay, we'll, see. We'll, we'll move on to Karen. Karen, can you see the screen? Yes. Okay, would you be willing to do number four for us? Yes, but I'm going to need some help. Okay, well, let's talk it through. Okay. So, subject, object, verb, right? Yes. Okay, what verb are we going to use? Learning. Okay. So, since we are learning, that's our subject phrase, right? We are, is the subject and learning. So, it's already built into there. So, what would be our object? Muskogee. Good. So, Muskogee. And then we'll just say, what we Muskogee language? Hila. Muskogee Obonaga. Okay, then how would you say we are learning? Uh, Gifflees. Gifflees. Good. Okay. So, now, good job. Muskoga wanaga kishis. Okay, what's the difference between number four and number two? Anybody remember what the difference is? They spelled exactly the same, but what's the difference in in the words? Anybody remember? The long e and the short e. Okay, which one is the long e? Uh, number four. Good. So we remember we long e we. Kishis, it's a long E. He, she, it, kishis, kishis, short. Is, is, good. Muskogi obonaga, kishis. Okay. Mahaya, are you on there? Coming back to you. Okay. We're going to move on to uh, Aaron. Aaron, can you see the screen? Yeah. Okay. Number five. Will you, can you do number five for us? Um, is singing Yehegida? 
Yep. Uh, so, Miku Sabi Fulana would go first, right? Yes, Miku Sabi Fulana, because that's your object. So then it would be Yehe Gagis? Good. Yep. Ah, yes. Yehe Gagis. Yehe Gagis. Miku Sabi Fulana, Yehe Gagis. Good. They are singing. Miku Sabi Fulana. Or we could change this to whatever song we wanted. Yehegagis, they, Gishis, we, Punayas, somebody else, he, she, it, he, just, I, see. Okay? Now, um, are there any questions about these translations? Anybody got a question? I can't see Mahi. Oh, there he is. Anybody got a question? <clears throat> okay, well, let's see. Stop sharing. Okay, anybody confused by um, <laughs> the definites and indefinites? Are we kind of <laughs> Daryl's kind of confused? Michaela and Jasmine, Bob and their heads. Um, well, we're gonna review this as we go along, so remember that. But try to think about these things because like, like we said, we need the foundation. So when we go on and we do two subjects or subject phrases, um, this will become more um, important and used. Um, so are there any questions about anything we did, anything you wanna do? I think tomorrow we're gonna do, a, uh, we'll do another type of this, go over this, and then uh, we might do a reading activity um, so put on your reading caps, put them on, and we'll read, um, Mahi, man, uh, man, I've been saying, yeah, man, uh, hello, can you see me? Yeah, choga halate noga, mahi, jicha, mahi, man, ahun gatka, choga ahun gatka, 176, mahokin, creek clans and kinship, man, ohonaga, man, hojeje, anyways, I was thinking maybe we can read, from this book, it's called Creek Muskogee Text, written by uh, Mary Haas, who was uh, a good linguist, and then uh, James Hill. Songibido, he was from Halebi, down in Hannah. And uh, he wrote some stories. This book is all written in Stajati, every single page, and there's over 800 pages in here. But I was thinking maybe we could read a little bit about these stories. I know that was mentioned last week, so maybe, um, that way we can see um, how people use it in writing, if they use the T or if they don't use the N, um, to see um, how they write, um, things like that. And keep in mind, this guy was alive in 1880s through 1840s, so he was a kind of older guy, but everything he wrote was kept up by the Mary Haas. And so this will be a good um, teaching tool for us to use. So tomorrow, Baxi Ohonai, please. <laughs> We're twins. We we uh, both have these books. But anyways, so tomorrow we'll do reading activities, and then um, we'll go over some more of these things. So if there aren't any questions, man, we're done for the night. So we'll see y'all tomorrow.